You mess with the bull, you get the horns. Okay, I'm gonna tell you today why the people of Europe and working class fans all over Britain have won the day and what North American fans can take from this example of just sheer unbelievable will and dedication. Okay, so the American billionaires, they tried to take over European and British football and run it the same way they run North American sports and frankly, hold it hostage, assuming that they can control a tradition almost as embedded in European and British culture as the major religious groups out there. They assumed that these teams and the sport of European football was a freaking drug and that no matter what they did, the people over there, they would consume it. Cut it poorly? Don't worry, they'll consume it. Crappy product that kills people? Don't worry, we control it. They thought that no matter what happens, the people of Britain and the people of Europe would be looking for their fix. Wrong! Okay, so I'm gonna give you my take as a Canadian and frankly, as a fan of only North American sports. I wanna summarize how big of a deal that I think this is, even though I know nothing about football. But I can tell you what I do know. I know enough about football to know that you don't with a British or a European Premier League fan and their sport, period. So here's a summary of what happened. A bunch of American billionaires over the last 10 years have bought in some of the most profitable football teams over in the British Premier League, the European Premier Leagues, who all compete in their own local league, which isn't a great way to say it because these are massive leagues, but their own local leagues. And the winners of these leagues move on to what is called the Champions League. What makes these leagues so unique, if you are like me and a North American fan that doesn't necessarily follow this sport, is that there is a relegation period, meaning if you suck, you don't get into the Champions League. And if you have a bad year in your league, you can be relegated down to a lesser league and the lesser league's champion can come up to your league. This gives incredible tradition and incentive to the teams over there competing in these leagues to think of new and innovative ways to put the best players possible on the soccer field, sorry, football field, in order to win the day. This gives fans over there a sense of do or die because if you are relegated, it feels like actual death. In North America, we don't have that. When you're a loser in North American pro sports, you just go to the bottom, get thrown in a lottery with some people. Nothing is on the line. Buffalo Sabres suck for 20 years? No big deal. Where else are you gonna go, city of Buffalo? There's nowhere else to watch. Jacksonville Jaguars? These guys have been a joke since they entered the league. The New York Jets? Living off one Super Bowl, guys. You are one of the most profitable teams in one of the most profitable sports, and you have complete ineptitude of ownership and do not even get me started on the Detroit Lions. All of these teams in the format that they play over in Britain would have been relegated as they should have been. And the competitive nature of sport, the true reason we go watch sport because of the high and just feeling of elation you get when things happen that shouldn't happen because of the will of men and women competing at their best. Oh, it's awesome. It is absolutely fantastic and nothing can capture it better than what Premier League football does because of the relegation. And these billionaires, I mean, I don't even, I'm not even a football fan over there. And I understand this. And these billionaires thought that just because they bought a team that they could go away, take the most expensive and wealthy teams in these leagues, combine them together to make a super league. And if that doesn't sound American to you, I don't know what else does. Hello, Super Bowl. They tried to make a super league and this super league supposedly would be 16 teams, not playing against anybody else, not letting anybody else in, not having any rhyme or reason as to why you're at the table other than you're part of the billionaires club who allowed you in. What up, cool kids? This is something that has been in the work for anywhere from one to 10 years. Nobody knew about it. There was no dirt sheets about it. There were no reports about it. They just announced it, said they were doing it, and gave the big up yours with a middle finger to the fans saying, you don't like it, tough. We think you're gonna tune in anyways. And 48 hours later after the announcement, they have reneged and canceled the league because of the passion of the British and European fan bases. Amazing freaking job. Now, little bit of background on the owners. A lot of these owners own American NFL teams. They tried to Americanize a sport they knew nothing about with a people that do not follow American values and traditions. Yes, they are part of the West. No, they are not American. And the egocentric American belief best way no matter what is frankly just wrong. If you don't like it, tough. There is a world out there. And when it comes to sports, you are not going to mess with people and their traditions and their teams. You must 
understand the culture of what you were doing and what you were buying and you clearly did not get this culture and you know what the biggest perpetrator of all this the biggest loser and the most like ass hat of the century is Stan Kroenke Stan Kroenke is the dude that owned the NFL team known as the St. Louis Rams who yes I know used to be called the LA Rams and moved to St. Louis and decided that a passionate fan base for a sport in North America that does extremely well in the South and the Midwestern United States did not need to be housed in the Midwestern United States because his friends in the billionaire club didn't care or even know where the city of St. Louis was. And this isn't a small city, but when you're dealing with people from Tokyo and Shanghai and London and all over these mega universes and cities in the world, and yeah, they may as well be called universes because frankly, they think they are the center of it wherever they're from. They didn't know or care about what Midwestern St. Louis was all about. So he had to move the team to Los Angeles so he could say he was part of a mega global metropolis. That's the only reason he moved it there. Do not kid yourself for any other reason. It was profitable in St. Louis. The only reason he held them hostage to a billion dollar stadium deal was because he knew it wouldn't happen and he moved them to a place where they basically played in a crap hole so he could build his new, I don't know, temple of worship to himself and his team. This guy, same guy, bought Arsenal. Arsenal is one of the most profitable sports teams on the planet. Arsenal has one of the largest, most well-known traditional fan bases in in English Premier League soccer. Again, I'm not even a fan and I know this. So he buys this team about 10 years ago and slowly starts running it into the ground because he doesn't understand how relegation works and how you have to attract and create a culture for players, the soccer players, football players, I apologize, I'm sorry, I'm dumb North American, I always call it soccer. He did not create a culture for the football players over there to thrive in. So he was unable to generate the best players, unable to generate the best coaches and he hasn't won and his team keeps getting worse. So instead of figuring this out, he decides to Americanize it, being of his other buddies, and make their own league. Take your ball, go home. No relegation, no tradition, nothing. Everybody else is cut out. Do you wanna know what European Premier League and English Premier League soccer reminds me of? It reminds me of NCAA football. I didn't understand for years why these top teams didn't have a singular division where they only play each other so NFL scouts could go see it. I didn't understand why people wanted to see their little school get beat up 700 to 10 by one team. And I say this as a Canadian. You just look at it and you go, this is ridiculous. And then I had it explained to me and I realized I was being an ignorant asshat as well. In the NCAA, it is tradition and very important for those small schools to be able to see and compete and play against the big schools. And when they beat them once in a million years, it becomes a big friggin' deal and everybody captures it. And that's what sports is about. I didn't realize that. But once it was explained to me, I got it. And English and European League football football is the exact same way, which is why you have to make sure you have people who want to protect the tradition and understand what the culture actually means running the goddamn thing. These owners wanted to Americanize something that they knew nothing about. And the funny thing about America from the outside, when you're up here in Canada or the rest of the world, most of the world, Canada doesn't necessarily, they run on what is called a stakeholder theory, meaning that whether it's a pro sports team or it's just a business, that there are three key stakeholders that must be appeased in order to make things, you know, good. The stakeholders, the owners or the shareholders, America loves to talk about those and they love to make sure that that is 100% of the people they focus on. However, the rest of the world tends to focus on customers, which, you know, some American companies do admittedly focus on the customer. But the crazy thing about Europeans is that they like to also focus on the employees or the workers. And they balance the three of these things equally. Because you know what happens if you don't focus on the three stakeholders properly? They strike or they stop buying your product or they walk out and they punish you. And that is what happened to these American billionaires trying to buy and bully their way into a new league. The fans and frankly, players and media punished them just the same way they do to corporations or people that do not follow British and European traditions. Fans, players, owners should all have a 33% stake at the table. And when you say, or you have the belief that the owner bought it, they can do what they want. That is you giving up your power and not claiming your 33% at the table. There needs to be a win, win, win scenario. Not all of these stakeholders are gonna win every time, but 
frankly, I think we have forgotten in North America that there are two other key stakeholders part of any equation in business that we want to discuss. And we have spent far too much time fighting each other and supporting billionaire shareholders that literally just don't care about anything else other than making money. But not the Brits and not the Europeans. You did not get to mess with their football. And it is just unbelievable to see that within 48 hours, they were able to turn this around. I am not the authority on this. I am not the best person to be following if you want more information on Premier League soccer. I won't be covering it anytime soon because it's just not my forte. Go check out some of the other amazing YouTube channels that are covering this. Take a look at some of the media pundits. Read the social media articles. This is an absolutely incredible story and I think it's one that is worth reading and knowing about. So my hats go off to the Brits, my hats go off to the Europeans, and most importantly, my hat goes off to all the fans. Thanks for watching today.